I'm gonna need you to stop using pivot tables. At least for this video, like after this video, you can go on and make your own decisions. But for me, I don't like pivot tables, or at least not in a typical sense that I think a lot of people tend to use them. So let this video be an opportunity to get a, a slightly different perspective on how you could be utilizing pivot tables to maximize their potential without pumping the brakes on your career prospects. So let's jump into it. All right, I made a video recently that went a little bit viral and the number one comment or reaction that I got to the video was, why didn't you use a pivot table at the end of this thing? So just to kind of step back for a second, what happened was I had this bare bones raw data set that I then went and formatted very quickly. It was sort of a speed run. I formatted it and then I created a summary view in a table where I used custom formulas, functions, and formatting. Now, the observation that, hey, you could have just done that with a pivot table is valid. I hear you, I get it, you're not wrong. You could. I could very easily have done a pivot table. The issue is the intent behind creating a summary is typically you're creating a presentation layer. And when I think about a presentation layer, I'm thinking about something that I'm gonna to deliver to a stakeholder. The way that I tend to think about pivot tables and the way that I would encourage others to think about pivot tables as a wonderful tool for rapid slicing and dicing of data. It's for exploration, very quick exploration. It's just one of many tools that you could use. I don't see pivot tables typically as a great use case for creating presentation layer work. Now, there could be some exceptions for somebody who's gonna invest a lot of time in custom formatting and adding slicers and, and pivot charts and other things, creating an interactive dashboard. I'm not gonna argue that there's probably situations where that might be meaningful. I'm also gonna argue with you that the amount of time that one has to invest in order to custom manipulate a pivot table to produce the kinds of outputs that you might be looking for is not necessarily going to be a good investment of your time when you could just as easily use that time creating a schedule that exactly fits what it is that you're trying to reflect or represent to the end user. Now you can do that through conditional formatting, other custom formats, dynamic functions, array functions. There's so many different things that you can do and I just want to be able to give you some insider information on how this might be perceived to, to someone like myself. I learned early on in my career when I was delivering analyses uh, or reports to a CFO and I would just quickly whip up some pivot tables and send them over. And it became very quickly apparent that that was not very well received. It was not, and it wasn't because it didn't rep represent the answer or it give insights into what was being done. It just, it was lazy. It was something that I was whipping up too quickly and I didn't put a lot of thought into it and certainly no thought into the presentation layer. This wasn't something that I handed off to a CFO that he would have been comfortable taking and presenting to a CEO or someone else, right? Honestly, I shouldn't have been comfortable presenting it to him. And now as a CFO myself, when I receive something that looks like a pivot table or something that somebody just didn't put any effort into, it's just, it's the buck's gonna stop there, right? And here's one of the most magical things that can happen in your career. People start to discover your work. Now, I know on LinkedIn and out in social media land, brand building is all the rage. People like to talk about building up your personal brand. There's not a lot of people who talk about the importance of building up your brand within the company or organization that you currently operate. Because this is real, like this is a real thing. Think about it like your reputation, but there's also some branding there where the work that you produce, people know it, people see it. They know what work from Jill looks like. They know what work from Steve looks like. They know what work from I look like, right? They People get to understand that as they see some more of your work. And if all you're doing is producing pivot tables, then people get that. And they're like, okay, if I ask him for something or her for something and I just get a pivot table, then that's what I get. 
the likelihood that your work is going to ever go beyond that sphere is going to be slim to none. And that means that your sphere of influence, your brand, is not going to penetrate beyond that. But if you start putting a little bit of effort into refining your end product, into creating a brand for yourself, that is going to help you break through. That is when your work starts ending up on the desk of the CEO or on the desk of the CFO, the COO, or decision makers, people of influence who are going to see this and go, oh, wow, this looks great. Who did this? Okay, cool. Can we ask them to do X or ask them to do Y? Or it'd be really great if we could see this. But if all you're doing is spinning off pivot tables, the likelihood of that happening, hate to say it, probably pretty low, depending on the organization. But the one thing for sure is a little bit of time invested on the front end, not only is it going to save you a bunch of time on the back end, but it's also going to help carry weight with you wherever you try to go. Let's go ahead and first I want to drop to this screen here. Now, this is an example of, of what I was working with in this video that got popular and got a lot of people asking me, what the heck are you doing? Why aren't you just doing a pivot table? So here we got a client ID, some dates, some volume, some quarter and region data. These are all just, this was the raw data that then got manipulated and turned into quarters and regions using lookups from some geography and region data. We're not gonna get into that right now, but just suffice to say that the end result that I produced was this little table that just says you get your region, you got your total, you got your quarters and your numbers. And what I did to produce this was create a couple of dynamic array functions that it's gonna take a transposed view so instead of being vertical horizontal view of the unique quarters that exist in this data set and so this is dynamic if a new quarter pops up it's going to pop up and then i use conditional formatting on the top and bottom to make sure that it's presented the way that i want and then this here is just a sort unique of the regions so again this is just going to display the way that i want and then i've got my totals and then this is just a sum of the volume data stacked with a total of the volume data by region and quarter. You can see that there in the way that this works. This is fully dynamic, guys. So with that in mind, I'm gonna go ahead and just follow through on what was asked of me in, in the comments of this video where I said, why don't you just create a pivot table? All right, fine, let's do it. I'm gonna go Alt-N-V from inside the data set, hit Enter, and it's gonna say, hey, your volume data, is this what you wanna do? I'm gonna say yes. And I want the pivot table to plop right there, go OK, and there it is. We've got our, our space for a pivot table. Now, if I want to kind of mimic this setup, what I need to do is I need to drag my volume into my values. I'm going to drag the quarter into the columns, and I'm going to drag my region into the rows. There we go. Now, notice it like it made everything kind of move around a little bit that's typical behavior of a pivot table so first things first i'm going to go ahead and right click pivot table options uncheck auto fit column widths because that's a pain it's annoying i don't want that let's go okay great now i also don't want the grand total because for my purposes right now that doesn't make sense i'm going to go to design i'm going to go grand totals and i'm going to go on for columns only there we go and then now you just kind of take a look at this okay with a couple of clicks of the button I've effectively gotten a similar outcome, but you'll notice a few things, right? It's got like these default terminology, words, labels, color scheme. It's just not formatted great. So I still need to format this. I'm not going to send this to somebody. This is not a deliverable, right? Again, if I'm just like rapidly slicing through and trying to get a number, maybe I'm on Slack or on a call and somebody asks a question off the cuff and I've got the data, I don't have it on the tip of my tongue, I can do a quick pivot and go like, oh yeah, that number is this. That's great. It's not going to be like hand delivered to somebody. Maybe they'll say, okay, can you send me a schedule of that after the call? Or you can be proactive and offer it up. Say, hey, after this call, I'm going to send you a schedule that's going to give you all this data. Great. Don't send them a pivot table. Send, use that as an opportunity to create something that represents you and your brand in a quality work product. Now, just to kind of take this example a little bit further, I'm going to highlight this. I'm going to go Alt-H-K, Alt-H-9 to get rid of the zeros. We've got it formatted a little better. I want these centered, Alt-H-A-C. I want this to say regions. I want this to just say total. And... You know, if I want, I could go up into design and I could change the color scheme a little bit, but I just, I don't want to do that. I don't feel like it. So 
I don't know, it, like I could go in and I could indent these, I could go all the way. It's still gonna be a pivot table. It's still gonna look a little bit not right because I don't want this. I don't wanna have to hide rows. I don't wanna have to just do so much customization that at the end of the day, I could have just formatted what I wanted. Like it, it doesn't have to be that way. Now, here's another reason that you might want to reconsider the use of pivot tables and anything that's sustaining or something that's going outside of your bubble. It's static, right? It, it queries the data and it produces this output. Boom. Awesome. Great. Cool. Well, let's just pretend that, hey, we got Q3 and Q4 data right here. I'm going to grab it, copy, bring it over here, drop it here. Boom. We got all this new data. Boom. Take a look. And what happens? Well, first off, my dynamic functions worked. It sprawled out. My conditional formatting rolled. We have all the data. It is there. It is updated. It looks wonderful. Let's just pretend that this customer, oh, this was actually wrong. It was only 2,000. We're going to go F2. Actually, no, yeah, 1,200. Boom. That data updated too. Okay. So we got this now. All of these numbers are accurate. They're live on the fly. This guy is just still, it's, it's two steps behind and it still doesn't look great. So what do I got to do? I got to come in here and then I have to go here, refresh. Boom. There we go. That was quick at least, right? It, it, it's fairly efficient. And now it does what I wanted it to do. And then I still hate the format. So maybe this time I'm going to come in and I'm going to change it a little bit. Um, actually, before this, I, I created a custom view that looks somewhat like this. There you go. There it is. That's a little bit better. I still don't like this though. Alt H6, make that indented. This is about as close as it's going to get. Okay. But again, the data is not live and it's still a pivot table. It's still got switches and other things that I just, I don't want to have to deal with. And let's just pretend I wanted to use slicers. I could just as easily add a toggle or something like that up here to manipulate how this thing comes out. That's my point. Investing a little bit of time in creating a custom schedule is not the end of the world. When your alternative is a pivot table, if you are working on something that you intend to share or produce for a stakeholder, I would not be recommending that you send out raw pivot tables. You need to invest a little bit of time to format those in a way that you'd be proud if that showed up on the CEO's desk. You know, there, there's like a saying that says like, don't do something that you wouldn't be proud to see show up on the front page of the newspaper. Well, don't send out work that you wouldn't be proud to have show up on the CEO's desk. That's a similar mantra that I've lived by and it served me very well. And I, I try to instill that in others who I work with and who work under my teams uh, to always be thinking in those terms. So if you're comfortable producing pivot tables, then God bless, Godspeed, go do the thing. Um, I'm not, and I don't recommend it. So I would say use it for rapid prototyping, rapid exploration, but don't use it to send out at the end of the day. It takes about the same amount of time to format just right a pivot table as it does uh, custom formulas, functions, and, and other formats. And it's, it's gonna be dynamic, it's gonna be live, and you don't have to worry about data turning stale or not representing the actual data sets that you're, you're pivoting off of. So that's it. I think that's the end of my point here, and I hope that you got something from this video. And if you disagree with me or you wanna fight, go ahead and drop it in the comments. I'd love to hear more. Have fun out there. Thanks for watching.